Welcome to the Bleach Brothers Podcast. This is B-Word, and I am currently in Facebook jail on a visitation with Jake the Hater because Jake the Hater decided to call a metaphorical woman a whore. So welcome in, and hold on, hold on, hold on. Yep, yeah, security guard, yep, that. Yep, that's Jake. You know, it sort of okay. is like we are because I'm talking through glass to you because we're in two different locations on a computer screen. But fuck you, B-Word. Fuck and Mark you know, Zuckerberg. He, fuck you. know, you know He can go <laughs> suck a fuck. He can go suck a fuck like Maggie Gyllenhaal would say, dude. All I'm saying to man is uncuff the bro. Okay, number one. And then number two, it is very much like we're in jail because, you know, you're just wearing your white T-shirt and your sweatpants. And, the, you know, you have a you have a jail cell look, dude. I appreciate it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you this. It's not sweatpants because I don't wear sweatpants as a man. That means you've given up on life. I wear pajama pants at night because this is nighttime, B-word, and I'm going to go to bed after this. In I mean, gym. in all in all fairness, I mean, I'm I'm good with that. I'm I'm sitting here in a in a pair of gym gym shorts and a t shirt, and I'm fat, dude. So I didn't even go to the gym today, dude. So I hate go. I hate what happened though. I'm I, so this is my fourth time in Facebook jail. Um, and this time it was not even I wasn't even talking to anybody. I mean, the, some of the times I the second time I got to put in there was really dumb. Um, I posted a gif of Bobby Boucher, the Water Boys' mom. Say you are the devil, and some somebody the tried devil. to the yeah, devil. They they um reported me for that because they have no fucking life. Like I have a theory on that. Like like the internet is free, right? I'm not saying you should go cyber bully people and make them like you know want to kill themselves and stuff. But but <laughs> I will say this: <laughs> freedom of speech is a fucking thing. Right? Two two. I, it was a joke. People need to like really lighten the fuck up. Right. And and third and finally, B word, it's it's like how I feel about blocking people. You know, I don't agree with it. Right. And if you don't like something, right. you move on from it. I, I mean I posted it to a prominent website and it the question was, what would you what road sign would be for somebody that's not in your life anymore? And I just wrote whore because I thought it was hilarious. And apparently Facebook did not find it hilarious. So now I can't do anything for seven days. And you know me, I'm not really huge on Facebook, but this is the first time now where it's like, I'm just sitting there because I can't have it. You know, I can't have it, B-word. And everybody's posted all this shit. I want to say stuff. And everybody's, and, and a lot of people are giving me crap. They're sending me messages because I can still use Messenger. <laughs> and there's like, hey, Jake, what do you think about this? Fuck you, dude. So uh, speaking of, man, RIP to Norm McDonald, because one of my favorite Norm McDonald skits on Saturday Night Live was where he was Burt Reynolds and he was on Jeopardy with Will Ferrell and Jeopardy mm -hmm. was Alex Trebek. And he'd just be like, uh, oh, no, he was uh, he was Burt. He, yeah, he was Burt Reynolds. So was I guess it wasn't him. Yeah. But but the uh, Sean Connery impression guy, he's like Trebek. What's the difference between you and a mallard with a cough? And Trebek's like, I, I, I don't, I don't know. And he's like, well, well, one's a sick duck, and I don't remember how to finish this joke, but your mother's a whore. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the greatest, it's the greatest joke, non-joke ever. I miss Norm. I'm not used to this new Norm. No right? pun intended. Well, pun intended. There, you know me. I, I have that rule. Like, um, I deal with, um lost differently than most people i think i deal with it like anthony jeselnik one of my favorite comedians i don't know if you know who that is b word i do okay i you know this if you're in the if you're in the spotlight like that big like for instance god it's not gonna happen but let's say like joe rogan died tomorrow right right i would have three jokes ready i would just put them out there because that's how i deal with it right i think you need to have a laugh you know it's like what the irish they don't celebrate death they celebrate the life of the person right Right. It's called a celebration of life, right? And so some people get mad at me for that. I've been booed off stage when I did stand-up up here for certain people. David Bowie died. I decided that night was a good night to tell all the jokes about it and <laughs> didn't go over very well. Um, I thought there were other people thought they were funny, but I mean I get it. Like, you know, but the thing is, like, I want people to know, like, like somebody was giving me crap today, just like sort of going back to the Facebook thing too, is you know, there's somebody there's Jake the hater, and then there's Jake the tailgater. Right. And they're two totally different people. I'm not saying I'm oh, yeah. like a weirdo schizophrenic, but you know what I mean? They're, they're there's there's two different presentations for the same person, depending upon the right. audience. And, and you know me as a real person, like who I am. Right. You know? Right. I'm a nice asshole. <laughs> I've never seen your asshole, so I can't comment on that. I didn't However, say I'm a nice asshole. I said you I'm are a nice a, asshole. You are a cordial dickhead. 
There you go. See, that's another way to put it. Dude, you sound like a church person. That's the difference. Like, I'm over here in Facebook. Like, oh, I'm a nice <laughs> asshole. You know, you're a cor- you sound like my grandmother. You're a cordial dickhead. Yeah. Yeah, you're a cordial dickhead. Grandma, you can't say dickhead. Well, your grandpa had a dickhead, and his dickhead. <laughs> oh, man. That's oh, terrible. Dude. I don't know. That's so terrible. have you been in Facebook jail? Yeah. So actually, so I so in the, my current job, I've been there for, uh, I don't know, I guess 18 months or something like that. And right before I, so literally a week before I got into this job, I had set up the other job, you know, where it was all of my tasks and everything were already given to somebody else. I mean, you just switch jobs. So you know what that looks like mm-hmm. where the person who's in position, they just start handing shit off. So that way that last week you don't have anything to do. That just so happened to be the last that the the week that I was in Facebook jail, and I don't really remember. Oh, I remember what it was, but it's political, so I'm not going to sh- I'm not going <laughs> to share it on our podcast because you know some people might take offense to that. But but yeah, it was a it was a political comment, and somebody somebody told me that I was being an asshole on the interwebs, and next thing you know, no. I had a week off. You were being a considerate dickhead. A uh, cordial, cordial, <laughs> cordial dickhead. Sorry, cordial dickhead. Cordial that like dickhead. A, that sounds like Werther's Originals, like original candy name. Yeah. <laughs> and like, then they went, you can't you can't suck a cordial dickhead, Jake. Okay, fuck it. Just put a Werther's Original. It. Just, get, just you go suck a Werther's Original. <laughs> it's like what uh, me and my brother, this is not PC, me and my brother, what we call Jolly Ranchers. We call them gay agriculturalists. <laughs> Because <laughs> Jolly is gay, not like not not what people are thinking, right. you know. But like not homosexual, and then, but yeah, like and then farmer is agriculturalist. So my right. brother all the time in the back of the car would be like, "Hey Jake, I want to go suck on a gay agriculturist." And my mom was so confused because you know my brother in the back just with his bald head and shithead look. He's just like, "Yeah, I'm gonna go suck some uh, gay agriculturalists yeah. in my room." <laughs> a, a watermelon one, no less. Oh, speaking of which, what's your favorite uh, uh, Jolly Rancher flavor? I think I gotta go with the uh, with the watermelon. To be honest with you, I th- I think that that one's good. Um, the apple one's okay, but to be honest uh, with you, man, I'm not really a big fan of Jolly Ranchers. I was. I like the chewy. I like chewy candy more than hard candy because um, I chew it anyways. Um, but see, and people hate my answers. Like everything I say on this show. People like I I don't actually people I want you to know I don't just say stuff to like have a hot take. I really like this shit and fuck everybody when they give me crap. Like draft day, it's a good movie. Draft day fucking sucks. <laughs> and speaking of speaking of, what'd you have for dinner tonight, Jake? I'm gonna tell you a second. Let me hold on. I get I'm gonna get that. So my favorite Jolly Rancher <laughs> flavor is lemon. <laughs> Oh, for fuck's and sake. And then cherry. They're delicious. And you know what's great about them, too, B-Word? Nobody likes them, so there's plenty for me. Nobody ever takes them. I'm like the weird owl of life. Like, nobody, everything I like, nobody wants, so I just scoop it up. You're like the shit-flavored Starburst. I'm a cordial dickhead. You're a cordial <laughs> dickhead. So uh, I had duck tonight, and I had people, as soon as I posted the photo, start sending me things and laughs, and I said, stop giving me a boner. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm in pajama pants and I'm in Facebook jail. That's the last thing I need. No, I made um I made duck with ancho cherry sauce or like an ancho chili cherry sauce, delicious. And then threw some pistachios in rice, okay, with some spring onions and then just some sautéed gr- green beans. So Kids basically, beans. you had duck mm. with nuts. I had a duck with nuts and some uh, and a long string bean, and it was d- delicious. You but a, you know you what's had great? A lasso. Yeah. You know what's awesome though, B word? My kids have an amazing palate. All right. my my eleven month old was just going to town on this duck. My four year old did. And so the, the nice thing is is that they're not gonna be picky eaters. Like they'll have their dino nuggets every now and then and mac and the box mac and cheese. But they eat very good. Like the night before the wife actually made jalapeno bacon mac and cheese from scratch and they loved it. They like huh? spicy food. They, so I, I am, I am, I am proud to say that. And it's not just because I'm a chef, but it's like, it's, it's good because when you go out to eat, <clears throat> have you been with that person that's an adult and all they order is chicken strips? Yeah. Yeah. You got the chicky nuggies. <laughs> yeah. But we've had that discussion. I do not like to call them chicky nuggies. They're chicky nuggies. Oh my God. See, you're going to get kicked in your gay agriculture. You in <laughs> are a cordial dickhead. <laughs> uh, okay. So I'm going to move us, move us past this real quick. B word. I have a new game. That okay. I came up with. And um, 
So we, 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 you know, we like to play games and stuff. We like to do top 10 lists or, you know, top five or whatever. So I remember, do you remember the show um, with Bam Margero? The one where he had his house. I don't remember what it's called. You know, there was Jackass and then he had his own show. Viva La Bam. Viva La Bam. Yeah. Remember in his house, he had a jukebox. He did. So I know when um, behind the curtain, when I was trying to get you the idea of this, uh, you imagined like a jukebox in like a bar or something, I'm guessing, where it's like you pick songs. I did, yeah. And I was imagining like if I own my own jukebox. So this game is the everlasting jukebox, okay? Uh, TM, trademark reasons. Uh, so Copyright B-Word Industries. Oh, I'm sorry. Bleach Bros Industries uh, 2021. Hashtag Bleach Bros Podcast. Hashtag Jake is a, is a stupid Ugly cordial guy. dickhead TM that little logo yes in the top. yes so anyways yeah, the, the cordial dickhead brand of the everlast or the uh, the etern- uh, what is it everlasting jukebox everlasting jukebox there we go okay so um the whole point is uh for the first one I wanted to come up with if you owned a jukebox in your house right okay and you had to put ten albums in there only ten okay what ten albums are you putting in there why. And I, I, I have my criteria why, but I want to hear, because you have your list and I have mine. What, before you start giving them away, what criteria did you put behind why you picked some albums? Okay. So my first point uh, that I wanted to hit on was it needed to be an album that I had playing constantly at, at a okay. certain point in my life. Okay. Um, so that's number one. Number two, it had to invoke some kind of memory. So positive, negative, whatever. There had to be some nostalgic reason for it. And then number three, they had in, they had to be an artist that um, has put out multiple albums. Okay. That's good. Uh, there, there was two rules, too, that I forgot to mention. Uh, no compilations. So, like, you couldn't pick, like, Vans Warped Tour 2013, whatever, right? Or, right. like, and then no greatest hits because that's cheating. I yep. think you can't just pick, you know... Uh, because also some bands come out with multiple greatest hits albums, which pisses me off. That's a whole another right. fucking segment. Uh, for me, the criteria was sort of the same. Like if if I listen to it on rotation a lot, uh, the number one thing for me though was, and I used to I used to hate this. Did you ever like go buy an album like a record store or something? Because uh, yes, millennials were older than you, and uh, we we lived a better life uh, where we would actually go to a music store and, and have have a real thing instead mm-hmm. of just downloading shit. Um. And you'd buy an album and you'd be excited, and then there was only two good songs on it. Oh, I hated that, dude. Yeah. So, so the one thing is like my so two of my top favorite bands of my life are not on this list, and it was really hard for me to do that because the main thing I did with this list too is what album can I listen to back to back every song? Yeah, that was and huge be like, for me. I this is everything's a, a banger for me, and I like every song on here. Right. And that was the criteria. So um, when I list mine, too, I'm just going to be up front. I'm not doing this in any particular order. Oh, same thing I here. I, yeah. yeah, I'm not. I, there's no way that I could rank these in, 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 in an order anyway, just because they are all different and they all share the same mantle, if that makes sense. Yep. So um, how do you want to do this? Just I mean, I know I made the game. Do you want to go through all your top 10? Or do you want to go through like five and then I go through five or how, how do you want to go about it? Be word. Why don't we do five mm. and then discuss it and then five and then discuss it and then we'll just go back and forth that way. Sounds good, bro. So you can start then. All right. So I'm going to go with uh, Nirvana. Never mind. Though the little wiener on the front. The but little yeah, wiener no on more. the front. The because child the porn him. lawsuit. Yes. Oh, what a joke. Um, so the Nirvana Never Mind album. I thought was really, really well done. It was it was revolutionary at the time that it came out. Grunge wasn't really a thing. Um, I mean, it was if you really want to study music, but this is where it became mainstream. I thought it was really, really good. The songs on it, I can listen to every song on it on repeat. And uh, I think it's aged well. I mean, now granted, some music doesn't age very well. Um, like if Bill Cosby had a, uh, you know, like Bill Cosby's barbecue sauce television episode. <laughs> you ever see that? Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. one's so bad. But um, but obviously that's not music. But, you know, I think that some music ages well and then some music doesn't. And Nirvana ages pretty well. So that's on my list. So uh, that's the first one. Well, see, and I want to I want to make a point on that really quick, um, like. Cause I used to, I used to talk about that with people and like an album for me and it's not on my list, but like nine inch nails, right? 
Yeah. Is I think the sort of the point you're trying to make where you could put them in today's music. Yep. And they sound like they belong today. Yep. And you can put them back in 1990 when they came out and they sounded like they came out in 1990 and you get it. Exactly. And so I, I totally, that's how I do feel that way with Nirvana. In your, in your, is it in your, I can't pronounce shit. We know that on this show. In your Roto, in your Roto, that album. Naruto? In, no, no, it's an album by Nirvana. In your Roto. I can't say it. That's my favorite album by him. Whatever. Because I can't fucking talk. Go to your next one. All right. Next one mm. is Dr. Dre, The Chronic. Um, again, fantastic album. Uh, this was his, I don't want to say this was his breakout album because it wasn't his breakout album, obviously, but Dre being the perfectionist that he is, um, I loved damn near every song on this album. I've, I can't tell you exactly how many times I've listened to it back and forth. Um, when you had, uh, you know, guest spots by Snoop, you had, um, you know, Tupac was on it. I mean, it, holy crap, dude! This was a this was a fantastic album. So, Dre the Chronic is is uh, number two on the list for me. And again, not in any particular order. It's just the second one that I'm getting ready to name. That's a that's a great album. Uh, not on mine. Great album. I will say, uh, I agree with you. Uh, is almost all your music going to come from like the early '90s? B word. Uh, well, let's see. No, not all. Okay. Of them. Okay. Not cool. all of them. What 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 what's another one you got? So here's here's one that's very similar to the Chronic. It is uh, Snoop Dogg Doggy Style. Uh, Doggy Style is uh, mm. again. I I can't tell you how many times I've listened to that. Uh, I thought it was I thought it was awesome because Snoop came on the scene. He was a he was you know he worked with Dre, and um, this is this is him coming out. This was him having that funky beat that Dre put together and him coming out and telling a message about growing up on the street. And I, dude, it was fantastic. Fantastic. You're going to hate me for this and sort of listeners. I, I like Snoop. Don't get me wrong. Snoop is not a guy I buy albums of. Snoop is like a Robin to every rapper, in my opinion. Like he's, he's the guy that <clears throat> you, you, you have him on as a, um, a feature. I don't need to hear a whole album of Snoop. I, you know what, man, I disagree, and the reason why I disagree is because well, Snoop, <laughs> Snoop was the featured player in this uh, album. I agree with you. I think later Snoop, like as Snoop's career progressed, he became the Akon of of the song well, or the T Pain no, of the song. I don't song. know if he's that bad, but well, no, I'm not <laughs> saying he's that bad, but he took okay. on a role. He had a few like bars. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He had a few bars. He was introductory. He he had a little hook, whatever, but it wasn't really his song, but the but the person whose whose album it was or whose track it was could say, Oh, Snoop laid down some lyrics. Like I agree later in life that that's Snoop, but Doggy Style was awesome. And the fact that they had the two uh radio call in tracks on there um, were fantastic. I hadn't heard that at that point in my life. Again, when I'm talking about listening, you know, the, the real, the three areas that I'm ranking these, I listen to this on rotation. It's very much nostalgic for me. There are songs that come on that I'm like, yeah, this brings me back. And then of course, Snoop has multiple albums. So that also, uh, does that. So you ready That's, for me to go on to the next one? Oh, I'm, I am, dude. And I'm surprised. I didn't, I, I didn't even think you would have more than one rap album on here, but you know. oh, dude, I love rap. I rap know you do. I just at, didn't, ex I didn't expect it. So, and mm. not to, not to continue on with the rap, but I'm <laughs> next one's another rap album. Uh, Tupac Machiavelli. Machiavelli. Uh, really? Yep. Same thing, man. I've listened to this album front, back, sideways, upside down. Uh, holy shit. Just him being able to come down. You you actually know that he recorded that and and produced it and everything within like a matter of days. Like the whole album, it was just done within a matter of days. And of course, it came out posthumously. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly um, because it actually came out after he died. Um, and that I think that that's why it's more nostalgic for me because I remember when Tupac died and I remember when this album came out and like this album was such a craze. But you listen to the lyrics, and I do now. In all fairness, like I'm a, I'm Biggie to me is much better than Tupac. Okay? Oh, see now you're wrong. You uh, shut no, your damn I, mouth. I think I think Biggie is more of a lyricist than Tupac is. I think Tupac's an angry rapper, but um, in all fairness, I don't have a Biggie album on here on my list. See, I would. I'm an all eyes on me. 
See, that's a good um, album too. Rock album guy. Um, I think he's better. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm all West, West side, West coast for rappers. Uh, and see an angry rapper to me is DMX. Who's my favorite rapper of all time. <laughs> okay. Rough riders, baby. Just down and lay down. Cat, I, I think it was Cat Williams said that he met DMX or something like that, and he's like, he does an impression. He's like, "Hey, old bitch, bring me the water and some lemons." I tell you so what, I funny. met Cat Williams. Did you? I met him at Mandalay Bay in Valet. I was standing there and I saw this short little guy get out of like a Chrysler 300. And I'm looking at him and I just stared at me and I just walk up. And he goes, "Yeah, it's me, motherfucker." <laughs> Like, that's funny. I was like, oh, that's cool. But anyway, sorry. I met interrupt. Duke in Vegas too. Like I was, I actually worked for a bank at the time and he showed up and he showed up with a whole bunch of people. And the bank that we worked, that I worked at was not in a good neighborhood at all. Like the day before there was a drive by two days before that, there was a bum masturbating outside. <laughs> like it was, <laughs> it was incredible, dude. And so on this particular day when Snoop showed up, like he had uh, these mountain of men, around him dude they were all like six three six four and they were all like 350 400 pounds dude i was scared um and snoop was the coolest dude ever like uh, all of a sudden you know one of the people's like hey it's snoop and so i come over and uh i, I walk up to snoop and he goes what it do baby boo and i was like yeah fucking snoop so awesome dude i, I met I, so I met dog. four rappers i'm gonna go through these real quick so i lived down the road from flavor flav flavor flav oh, yeah. in vegas yeah. you remember that um, yeah. And so I'd run into him all the time playing poker and blackjack at South Point, and I'd sit next to him. So and not that we were friends, but my favorite with one with him is when I ran into him at Seven Eleven. He was buying Gatorade. He bought me two, and he just goes, "Here you go, here's some flavor." <laughs> so, <laughs> I met Flavor um, Flav. He's actually yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, and then um, Ken, uh, Kanye West. I met him. I have not met Kanye. I met Kanye when he was first coming up, um, and I met him at Nordstrom in Vegas, and I sold him shoes men's shoes and because here's how he goes what do you think of these i go mr kanye those look great on you he goes damn right and he just bought them that was our <laughs> conversation uh, my favorite is suge knight's not as big as he th- he he comes across but i mean i'm a no. tall guy but i met him he's yeah. not that big he was in a tommy bahama shirt and then the saddest rapper i met do you remember mike jones mike jones, mike jones! Where he said his n- name i think 98 times on that album yeah i met him and here's why it was sad i was standing there and he was standing in the fashion show mall in Vegas and he's just by himself. And he was doing that like thing where it's like he was trying to pose and hope somebody noticed him. And of course I yeah. did. So I walk up and go, are you Mike Jones? He goes, yeah, I am. And I went, cool. And I walked <laughs> off <laughs> and then he just stood there and nobody else walked up to it. I felt oh, so bad. That's and I funny. felt like he just needed Paul Wall next to him so he could yell his name. But anyways, <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's all right. So what's that's your fifth funny. one? And then we'll, and then we'll stop and then we'll go on. Fifth one on here is Metallica, the black album. It's a great album. And yeah, I, I, if you have not heard Metallica, the black album, you're living under a rock. Uh, it's a phenomenal album. Every song on there is wonderfully done uh, from the lyrics to the beats to uh, the chords. Everything is fantastic. Uh, so yeah, Metallica, the black album is my number five. Uh, so fifth one I'm saying, obviously these aren't ranked, but uh, so what are your five? So, number one, I'm going to list Slipknot, Iowa. Oh, that's a good one. I can listen to every song on that album. I remember when that came out. I, I remember when it was coming out. There was there was a few things I remember about that album. They were in the movie Rollerball, which that was the only reason I watched that shitty movie was for the one scene that they're in for like not even a minute. Right. Two, uh, they went on, you know how they, they do promotional stuff. And that was back in the day when I watched like late night TV and stuff. And they were on Conan. And I was so surprised Slipknot was invited to perform on Conan O'Brien. And how Conan's fantastic, dude. He's fantastic. But you know what I mean, though? It's like, you know, they were playing the Heretic Anthem, but that whole album is so hard. And I mean, the first every I own every album by him. I'm a huge Slipknot fan. Uh, one of my biggest regrets, and you know, you have them when you get older, is I was in college at the time and I had a choice. Um, our old f- friend Fobbs. Fat Bobby, mm-hmm. Fobby, hit me up and he goes, hey, Jake, um, I got tickets and VIP passes to meet backstage Slipknot. Do you want to come? And I said, no, I have two finals this Friday. And instead of being a smart human by either just not taking the finals and trying to make it up later or going to the teacher saying, can I do it early? 
I stayed and did finals. And then all of a sudden they sent me photos that they were hanging out with Corey Taylor and them. And that's, so that's that awesome. Just, I know. So Slipknot, I, mean, Iowa, I think, for you, but that's I think awesome. it's their best album, but um, love it. Artwork, everything on it. Amazing. Two is um, Michael Jackson Dangerous. Oh, that's a good one. I I know a lot of people say Thriller, and I'm a I'm a Dangerous fan just because I think that was the first Michael Jackson album I was really introduced to. I love the album artwork because that was when we had cassettes. I remember my sister bought it and we listened to it in my dad's truck. Um, and so I I, I just have a, something for that song. The other thing is when I when I was a pitcher in high school, I would warm up on the mound, um, with headphones on, and I would always listen to Michael Jackson, and so that was. Just the thing. And I just remember I'd listen to that album over and over again. Uh, same I thing. Love every Michael. song. So, <clears throat> okay. So let me, let me stop you there. So Michael Jackson obviously had some controversial personal life stuff, right? <laughs> Does that impact you being a fan of his music? Because I know for some people, <clears throat> like, especially right now, we live in a cancel culture society where if somebody does something like Morgan Wallen or Whalen or whatever, however you pronounce his name, like the beginning of last year, I think he was caught using the N word and like his label dropped him. His manager dropped him. Like there were people who were fans that didn't have, didn't have him, but his, his popularity in music really didn't drop. Like his album sales were still, was were still, right around the same place. Um, you know, some, some stuff like that. So some people boycotted him because of, but some people were like, oh, okay, he made a mistake. And then they just continued to go on when it comes to somebody like Michael Jackson. What, what's your feeling on that? I don't care. <clears throat> and here, here's why and people, and I'm not getting political on this. So don't take it that way. I, um, I have a tendency to be able to distance myself from product and person. If that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. So like, <clears throat> I love Chick-fil-A sandwiches. Right. I don't have to love, you know, whatever they do. Right. Um, I still have R. Kelly albums. I don't like yeah. that he pees on little girls. I think it's <laughs> hilarious. Dave Chappelle make fun of it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm happy he got indicted or whatever. Me not too. whatever. Um, he actually got convicted. Convicted. Sorry. Not indicted. Yeah. Convicted. Um, but I can separate, I can separate the two and I, 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 you know, and I understand that's hard for some people and I totally respect their decision for that. This is probably also why I'm in Facebook jail. Uh, Um, true because I just, you know what I mean? I just, it doesn't bother me. I mean, if he did that, it sucks. The caveat to that though is B word. I guess if it was so egregious and I'm not, I've never been a proponent of this and we've talked about this in length before, like as friends, I don't believe in it. It hits too close to home. Because I think if you can make a joke about something, you can make a joke about anything and and don't get your feelings hurt just because it's about you. But yeah, it doesn't it doesn't bug me because I'm such a fan of his music and I can separate the music from the person, I guess. And I don't have to no, no I'm not saying like if Hitler came out with a rock album, I'm going to go buy it tomorrow. And if I found out that was th- a thing and even if it was a banger, you know what I mean? Does that right? I, I guess I would I have a line there, but I've never seen it yet. And I have and it doesn't affect yeah. me in a certain way. Yeah, and so I, I'm I, I'm with you there, and this this again this may be interpreted <clears throat> as political, and if it is, whatever, I don't care. Um, I, I hate cancel culture. Yeah, like I just hate cancel culture. I think it's the stupidest thing ever. Um, and like you, uh, I can li- I you know I can still listen to um to Michael Jackson music. Um, I can still watch you know reruns of the Cosby Show. Um although there really aren't any um i can still watch the dukes of hazard even though they're, that's not really on um it i think that there's an important context that what they did was terrible like kevin spacey for instance all the stuff that he's been accused of there's still many kevin spacey movies that i love um that i can watch over and over but um i can separate out the man or the artist or whoever it is from the product, just like you. And I think it's really important that we as a society really focus on doing that because this cancel culture nonsense is stupid. You and I uh, love comedians. We love podcasts. Um, and there's a shit ton of comedians that are, that are not no longer comedians. Like they're no longer touring uh, for fear of being canceled. You look at like Eddie Murphy, 
Um, you look at like um, what happened with Louis C.K. or Kevin um, Hart when he was going to host. Yeah, um, when he was going to host the yeah he was going to host the Emmys <clears throat> or the Oscars or something like that. Um, Joe Rogan's trying to be canceled right now because he of some stuff that he's you know said about COVID. I just think we we all need to grow up and get past it. So that'll be my that'll be the end of my rant there. Well, and it's like, it's, see, I also agree because like sports is another big one and that's a, that's a big hot topic. And I think, I think we've, we've made everything hot topics these days and it's yeah. buttons and it's, you know, cause I can, I can separate, I don't have to agree with everything LeBron does. I still love watching him play. You know what I mean? I don't have to, besides like Space Jam too. That's, that's I feel a like we're in a society <clears throat> that is in a dick measuring contest with how much of a victim we are. Like I'm comparing my victimhood to your victimhood. And I now for those of you that are like legitimately victims, something has, has oppressed you and it has caused you pain or suffering. I please don't take this out of context. Like I think that when we make anything and everything about victimhood, that removes the sensitivity we should have to somebody becoming a victim. And well, it, it creates a society where we're just trying to do dick measuring with victimhood. And I don't like that. Well, I remember back in the day, and I'm not trying to go off on a rant and get us off the rails of this game, but <clears throat> like where we used to make fun of the guy that would sue pop tarts because, you know, he put the whole wrapper in the thing and yeah. his house burned down and he was a victim. Now we applaud that. And that's yeah. the type of shit that pisses me off. But yeah. like the lady I, who spilled <clears throat> the co- or who had the coffee spilt on her, like I actually read up on that lady and I do think that she had a reason to to sue obviously she had a reason to sue she won but um but yeah i mean you know a lot of people go oh well she you know she just took advantage okay well maybe she did maybe she didn't but the reality is is that not everybody should be lawsuit happy and it's just crazy anyway let's get off that topic before we get too far down that road so number three eminem the marshall mathers lp oh i fucking love that one that one almost made my list dude it was hard for me to choose an album, which I do want to do a show eventually. And I mean, this could be about other al- rappers too and stuff, but you know, Eminem is one of our favorites and, yeah. and rightfully so uh, of ranking is because I think, you know, we, we've talked about it where people think it's crazy where I pick an album, but Marshall Mathers, because every song on that is a banger. And I think that was where every he really one. came into his, his own. Um, yeah. I, I love the first album. I have a, a very nostalgic part with it. Um, but this one, I think just, just overall, <clears throat> is an amazing album. And I can, I can listen yeah. to it back to back to back. Uh, so that's, that's number three. Good choice. Number four is, um, ice nine kills the silver screen. I have so, never, ever yeah, fucking I heard of that ever. So I love ice nine kills. Okay. And I, I actually started listening to them. I think in, I, I'm going to say a year and somebody, some fanboy is going to hate me, but I think it's 2006, 2007. And they started out almost like pop punk. And now they're like, screamo but the reason i love this album is their last their a new one's coming out next month the silver screen part two okay but so their last three albums one was called every trick in the book and every song is about a book in culture so like animal farm alice in wonderland and the lyrics are very clever the silver scream is all about horror movies and they did a ton of music videos with it too that was cool so they have a song about jaws a song about it they have a song about Texas Chainsaw, you know, stuff like that. Right. Um, and they're just like the Friday the 13th song and the Nightmare on Elm Street song. They're all great. They tell the story of the movie so you can imagine it. They just came out with one that's going to be coming out called Hip to be Scared. That's uh, for American Psycho. And it's just okay. the music video is hilarious too. So I, I'd suggest checking them out. Be I know you're not really into the screaming music like I am as much. But it's it's clever wordplay. Uh, Spencer, the lead singer, he's the only remaining member after all these years, has done such a great job, I think. He's a very good lyricist. So that's why that album makes it. Um, when I heard it, I just became a huge fan, uh, even more so. And um, so that was number f- four, right? <clears throat> that was number four. So number five would be Mudvayne LD50. That's a good album. That's so a really good album. There, there, now, the only problem with it is B-Word. It's a great album. But did you know this, that that album took them like 10 years to write? Yeah. Well, not 10 years to write. So what well, what happens is they didn't, they weren't signed. They were in right. Peoria, Illinois, and they, um, they got to perfect it. But I, I'll never forget me and the travesty bought 
back in the day, we bought the DVD of the live show. And I'll, and I'll be up front. I hate live albums. It's one of my least favorite things. If I want to listen to a, a, a crowd, I'll go to a fucking concert. I don't need to listen to it in my speakers. Um, there's only a few live albums that I like, but that's besides the point. But just watching that live DVD was amazing. Um, it's one of those two, the sound quality and all the different stuff for new metal they were doing was great. I think they were always better in the makeup. Uh, I think their sophomore album wasn't great because I think they only had nine months to record it. And you can tell the difference between 10 years of working on something versus nine months. And I know 10 month, 10 years you have so- something to perfect, but every song is different. It's all over the place. It shows range. Um, I love that uh, their bassist, I think it's Rhino. He uh, was, they found him in a jazz band, which totally makes sense because you have to hold rhythm and he's an amazing bassist. Uh, so one of my favorite albums, I always love the album artwork. I love the paint and all that. I had that all over my room. So that would be, yeah, that would be my number five. So that's, to, a, so that's actually a really, so for the first five albums that you introduced, those are actually really good lists. Um, I'm not familiar with the one ice nine kills, but uh, I'll, I'll tell you this, man, I'll, after this episode, I'll go back through and I'll listen to a couple of them. Uh, I'm not a big Screamo fan, as you already mentioned, but we'll go from there. So to so to sum up real quick before we before we move on, your number or so you have your first five were Dr. Dre the Chronic, Nirvana Nevermind, Snoop Doggy Dog, Doggy Style, Tupac Machiavelli, and Metallica the Black Album. Correct. Mine was Slipknot Iowa, Eminem Marshall Mathers LP, Michael Jackson Dangerous, Ice Nine Kills the Silver Scream, and Mudvayne LD50. Yep. All right, cool. So what's your next five for your everlasting jukebox, what you're going to listen to? Okay, so again, mm. I, and I have, to, I have to preface this again. So I had to listen to it on rotation. Uh, it has to be nostalgic, and then there also has to be multiple albums. So the next one on my list is Elton John, Goodbye Yellow Brick Road. Great album. I fucking love that album. There's everything about that album that's so good. And here's the deal. So my... My, my mom and my dad, I lived with my mom growing up and she would take me. So uh, we lived in Southern Nevada. My dad lived in Northern Nevada. So they would meet in central Nevada. And I remember the, the tape, the cassette tape being played in her car on the drive. And it was one of those where it was side A, side B. I would listen to side A. I would listen to side B and it was just freaking awesome, dude. And, uh, Elton John is an amazing musician. I love Mm. his little, um, little sausage fingers that he has because mm-hmm. he i have no clue how he plays the piano to the skill that he does with those little vienna sausages coming out of his palms but um he's he's fucking awesome dude so so elton john goodbye yellow brick road good one uh, uh guns and roses appetite for destruction i love 80s rock uh and that's actually the only 80s rock album that's on here even though i would say that there are better bands than guns guns and roses i would agree with you there but from the album standpoint i love every Mm. song on it uh i can play it on repeat without issue um next album is michael jackson thriller yeah see i knew i knew you'd have a michael jackson i knew you would not agree with my pick but okay no i agree with your pick i think it's a good pick i just like thriller better um and th- you know in all fairness thriller, thriller is more i don't want to say more mainstream but i would say it's more popular and that's probably why i like it a little bit more than the other one mm-hmm. but um you know when we're talking about michael jackson albums it's really like the difference between uh eddie murphy delirious and eddie murphy raw like everybody has a preference but they're they're both fantastic but see to me thriller is is essentially you can just tell me i okay in my opinion, it's like a single album. I only care about Thriller on. I mean, there's good songs. I'm not denying that B word, but to me, I think to me and a lot of other people that like other Michael Jackson albums, right. we know for the album for Thriller, and that's about it. And the music video and that gravi- gravitas like <laughs> whole experience. Yeah, I'm not gonna say that. I'm not gonna say that. You know, the album is stacked with hits, but I will right. say that the album's very, very easy to listen to. Again, yeah. front to back, it has nostalgia. I love that part of it. Multiple albums. Okay. So, Good. Michael Jackson Thriller. Okay. Um, I have a country album. Ah, oh, good for the, you. 
Yep. The country album is Garth Brooks. No fences. Okay. Yep. It's dude. I am a, I am a standard issue white boy, dude. So, um, so (laughs) you're the pumpkin spice with a dick. (laughs) Yes. So, uh, Garth Brooks, no fences. Uh, obviously there's many songs on there that were really good hits. Uh, the main song on there was friends in low places. Um, God, Garth Brooks has such talent and, and you know what he brings to country or what he brought to country music. So when you think about country music at the time that he came around, you had, <clears throat> you had some older, you know, country, you had more, um, more of the storytellers, but he really brought in the, I don't want to say pop because it wasn't pop, but he brought in the popularity of it, um, in the way that he would tell stories through his songs and in the way that he would do his songs. Um, so he reigned I mean, in a new sound. He did. For country. Yeah. He did. And the the only person and the only person that I've seen be able to do that in the same genre uh, is Luke Combs nowadays. Okay. Um I think Luke Combs uh is an old soul when it comes to country music. I don't listen to a ton of country music, but I can listen to Luke Combs all day. Um his album's not on my list, um but I don't know that I don't know that you can get better than Garth Brooks. No fences when it first came out. See, I listen to a lot of country because my wife mm-hmm. also does. And um, see, like I, I love like Chris Stapleton. I didn't put him on my Chris Stapleton's my, good too. Yeah, and it's it's because to me it's like I'll listen to his albums and it, it starts to meld together. And it's like I know yep. a few songs and I'm like, okay, that's the rest. Yep. Um, so I agree with you. Like I I have one country album on mine. Um, I didn't pick more and I was surprised because as you know, I listen to a lot of country music, yeah. but it, it just came down to, I could not pick an album where I can just listen to it back to back to back. And, and that was really my thing when it came to country albums, because, you know, I thought about Brooks and Dunn. I mean, they have oh, some yeah. really good albums, but they're, I can't listen to all of their albums. You know what I mean? Like, like they're more of, you want to download a handful of songs and be on your way. Yeah, Hillbilly um, Deluxe and you're good, right? Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> Exactly. All right. Okay, so my last 10? one, um, I don't know if you've heard of this band. You may have, um, but I actually saw them in person before I listened to any of their music. Um, it's revolution on the courage to grow tour is when I, um, when I, when I first saw them, they were uh, performing out of Tahoe with slightly stupid. They're a reggae band. Um, they have a phenomenal soundtrack. As a matter of fact, I'll try to dig up the photo, but me and me and uh, two other buddies, we, we went to the concert and we had a fucking blast. We ended up going with three other women and, uh, uh, just a really, really good time. Um, they have very much the, the beach type reggae sound, the relaxing chill reggae music. It is not like, um, I mean, it's kind of kind of like a Bob Marley, but it's not like a the Ziggy dirty Marley. Where, what's that? Not like the dirty reggae where it's. Yeah, it's not dirty, not dirty. Very smooth. Um, revolution and, and or revolution? Revolution, R-E-B-E-L-U-T-I-O-N, Revolution. Okay. Okay. Album is called Courage to Grow. Again, um, I can listen to it on rotation. I can listen to it uh, on shuffle. It's nostalgic. It was such a great concert. Um, and of course that time in my life was kind of defined by this album because I was so in love with the album, uh, and they've got multiple albums. So okay. that completes my list. What's your, what's your next five? Next five is going to be, um, Mayday Parade, oh, which is yeah. one of my favorite bands, a lesson in romantics. Um, and I actually loved the band so much. I mean, I have every album. I am going to get a tattoo with their lo- the guy with the red umbrella on me. Um, and I, I love also Go Radio when the lead singer left. Uh, I think it was Jason Lancaster. And then I have Jason Lancaster's like solo album too um, that he came up with. Not much people know about. Uh, lyrics, easy to sing along to, very well written, just good. Like, I wouldn't call it like, it's not rock, but it's also not emo. You know what I mean? It's like that emo rock, like just good music. Um, I've seen them live. They perform very well. So I, every album, they have another one coming out next month. Or I think it's November. Own all of them. So that, that's one of those ones. I can listen to every track on that, know them all by heart. Love that album. Uh, the next one's going to be Logic. I love Everybody. Logic. I love and Logic. I, I, his newest one just came out under or No Pressure and Bobby Tarantino 3. So, I mean, it really depends if you get into mixtapes or albums, you know, with rap. But right. 
Um, everybody for me is my favorite just because like even the song with killer Mike where he's at, you know, he sounds like a preacher. Yeah. Um, I can listen to that album over and over and over again. Killer and Mike's I, I, underrated by the way. Oh yeah. Very. So is run the jewels, baby. Yep. Um, but, uh, that, that's an album for me. And I was surprised. Cause like I said, DMX is my favorite rapper of all time. And originally I think I was going to put, you know, it's dark and hell is hot or flesh in my flesh, blood in my blood. But I, uh, you know, the cool part about this B word is I sat here and listened to so much music. I haven't listened to in a while, more albums. And I just went back and was like, yeah, but then it's like, I found myself skipping through some songs going, okay, well that's not going to make my list. Then if I'm going to skip through right. five or six songs. Right. So logic, everybody. Um, newfound glory sticks and stones. Okay. And I know, you know, a lot of people might say, you know, their original album or whatever, cause hit or miss and is on that. And, uh, sticks and stones, my favorite though. That's when my friends over you came out. I'm in that, I'm in one of their music videos. No joke in a SpongeBob shirt. Um, I've, I've seen them live seven times. One of my favorite bands to see live. I was, yes, I was really into the pop punk. You remember that in co- high school. Oh, yeah. Um, and I also started a riot at one of their shows in the Civic Center, <laughs> the Honda Civic in Las Vegas. I tried to jump over a bouncer to get down on the ground floor when they were, it, they were playing with it was them, the movie life, which is a great band, very underrated, uh, Good Charlotte and MXPX. Okay. And I tried to jump, and then the bassist from Newfound Glory jumped off stage, and one of the bouncers choked him into the wall because he thought he was a kid, as I was trying to do the same thing. And then everybody just rushed the floor because they told him to, and then people started throwing chairs, and it went nuts. Um, But yeah, that's that album for me will always stick out. That was, I think, one when I was a pizza delivery boy, too, and back in Pahrump. I had that going all the time. So Sticks and Stones by Newfound Glory. My one country album is Justin Moore's self-titled album. That's a good it's, one. It's it, Justin Moore's great, uh, very underrated. It's probably because he's so short. <laughs> um, it's a short album. It's only 10 songs, but there's not one. And the funny part was I was telling the wife and I was like, here's the country albums I'm looking at, you know, and it's not that I was trying to just pick one country album, but, you know, I listened to a lot of it and she's like, why wouldn't you pick Justin Moore? And one of the coolest stories with me and my wife was uh, we saw a Justin Moore concert for free here in Vegas or I mean, in, in uh, Portland. Uh, they were doing a, a show on the waterfront and they had like a gate and you had to get in. And I always had like, you know, me, I used to have like a queen size bed in the back of my truck with a tunnel cover. Well, I had chairs in the back of my truck at the time and we were walking and you could see the stage perfectly. So we just went and grabbed chairs and sat them right in the median in the middle of the, <laughs> in between the two lanes, there was a giant oh, talker. Cool. And, we sat, and then this whole crowd joined us and some policemen and everything. And we all watched the whole concert with Justin Moore and it was awesome. That's awesome. And it was hard for me because I almost picked Dustin Lynch because I'm a huge Dustin Lynch fan. And that's one of the one moments in my life. We went to um, Brownsville, Oregon. We went to a three-day country music festival. And you know me, B-Word. I'm a, I mean, I get loud and obnoxious on the show and stuff, but I don't get very excited. Like, I don't get super overly happy for things. Like, when people buy me gifts, I look ungrateful. I say thank you, but my face doesn't, you know. And when Dustin Lynch was playing... I was jumping up and down and screaming. I think like a 12 year old girl that my wife laughed at me and was like, this is adorable. I've never seen you. And so that's why I was surprised I didn't, but same thing. Couldn't find an album that I listened to nonstop by him. Um, so that would bring me to my 10th and final one, which is breathe Carolina. Hell is what you make it. Another one I've never heard of. So, when like uh, bands like 303 and them were coming out, this is, I guess, I would, I guess I would constitute as like the electro emo punk era. Okay. Um, the funny thing was, I, I didn't realize, so I, I, when I worked at Nordstrom at the time, remember, I, I love gay bars. <laughs> I used to go to a lot of gay bars. And it was playing one night, and I looked at my friend, and he goes, you guys play Greek Carolina? He's like, oh, we all love this album. But it's it's one of those. Every track is awesome. I'd suggest you to check it out. Breathe Carolina is great. There's some screaming in it. There's some singing in it. There's some electro in it. But they do a great job. Um, and it's one of those ones. All four, thirteen or fourteen tracks, I can listen to no problem. Now, so my top my or my ten in my everlasting jukebox is going to be Slipknot Iowa, Eminem. Uh, Marshall Mathers LP, Michael Jackson Dangerous, Mayday Parade, A Lesson in Romantics, Breathe Carolina, Hell is What You Make It, 
Ice Nine Kills a Silver Scream, Mudvayne LD50, Logic Everybody, Newfound Glory Sticks and Stones, and Justin Moore's self titled album. All right, to recap, I've got Nirvana Nevermind, Dr. Dre the Chronic, Snoop Dogg Doggy Style, Tupac Machiavelli, Metallica the Black Album, Elton John Goodbye Yellow Brick Road, Guns N' Roses Appetite for Destruction, Michael Jackson Thriller, Garth Brooks No Fences, and Revolution Courage to Grow. I'm going to have to check out Revolution. So so we said how hard this was. What's one honorable mention that you could you almost threw on and it was hard to not to? So I have mm-hmm. one honorable mention that you're not going to like because it kind of is a compilation. <laughs> oh fuck you. See? No. <laughs> but I have no, another no. but I have another um album that uh that's that's not a compilation. So I'm going to go with the compilation first. Fuck you. I'm going to go with the soundtrack to Point Break. You know I love that it. soundtrack. I'll you know I love that. that soundtrack. I know that's it's so uh, good and hard. I I love all the songs on there. I can listen to them all day long. Um yeah, just it's fantastic, dude. And then uh but if if we have to actually pick uh an actual album um, the one that I would go with is uh, going to be by Stained. Oh, dysfunctional. And huh? Is it dysfunctional? Yes. Oh, great album. Yes, dysfunction. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, um, this one came out when we were in high school, dude. And uh, Mud Shovel was like a fantastic song. And I could listen to that whole Stained album. And and honestly, I, I love everything that Stained's done. I follow Aaron Lewis. Like, I know Aaron Lewis is political. Again, I'm talking just music. Um, Aaron Lewis has a phenomenal voice, dude. What, you you know, like his country shit? Yes, I yeah, do. Okay, me too. I do too. I do. Um, mm. I love... Uh, I, I actually saw... So, And here's the other thing that I'm going to bring up to you uh, after, we, after we do our honorable mentions. I want to talk about, you know, who you've seen in person like concert wise because aaron lewis was one of the best concerts i've seen so uh stain dysfunction so what's your honorable mention him or what is it his infernal majesty but him uh razor blade romance okay yeah i never heard of it okay so um the heartogram that bam has like all in all his logos that's yeah. from that band him okay um huge fan. um that album i would say if you're gonna listen to him listen to that album Okay. Um, your sweet six six six, amazing song. His cover of um, oh, he's got a cover song. I mean, it, just every song on that it's it's all over the place. It's like that deep, almost like. Did you ever listen to like Taproot? Yeah. Or no, I'm sorry, not Taproot. A uh, typo negative. I think I've heard typo negative, but to be honest with you, I don't think I can point out. So a I'm not song. saying his voice is that deep. I'm just trying to say like you know it's that it's a different sound. Okay. Um, and I remember I only listened to him because uh, Bam did, and I was like, oh, "I'll check it out." And then because he was a big fan of that and the Lost Boys, or the Sixty Nine Eyes, the Sixty Nine Eyes best album is the Lost Boys. But um, so I, I checked them out. So Ham Razor Blade Romance would probably be mine. I guess if I picked a compilation, because you're an asshole, or soundtrack, it would be the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles original soundtrack from 1989. The original soundtrack. Like yes. not, not, um, not, not the, the, ooze. the one with MC hammer, dude, the MC that's the hammer. Second one. No, that's the first one. M- Vanilla ice is the second one. MC hammer is the first one, bro. Oh yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. You're, you're yeah, correct. You're no, correct um, there. That's what I'd say. I mean, I have a hard time talking about live bands B word. Cause you know, there's going to be a lot because I mean, my senior year, I think I went to 72 concerts. Well, before we get into live bands, I have one question for you. Okay. If there is a CD artwork, right, mm-hmm. or or an album cover artwork that you think is genius, that you think is the best one ever, could you pick one? I know I'm springing this on you. We haven't discussed it, but I have one. What's yours? Bloodhound Gang. <laughs> you know the one? <laughs> yeah, I know you could one. you could stick your tongue in the middle and you can make it look like a titty. <laughs> That's not. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm actually thinking of actual fucking art here, and like great photography and all this. And you're thinking about putting no, your- <laughs> it's a booby or a subie, dude. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, what's the best Bloodhound Gang song? Oh, definitely the the I don't even remember what it's called, but you and me, baby, ain't nothing but mammals. Oh, the bad touch. Yeah, bad touch. See, mine is the ballad of Chasey Lane because I don't know how many times I wanked it to that one. <laughs> That chick. Oh, I'm a big. Casey I don't know Lane how many fan. times I put my fucking tongue in that <laughs> CD. <laughs> oh my god! You know what I hope you did? I hope you sold it at a used one, and somebody else put their tongue on it too. <laughs> oh so my funny. god! So okay, so what was so? You've seen quite a lot of bands. I've seen mm-hmm. quite a lot of bands. Both of us have been active in the concert front. If you could say top two, top two people, top two bands. That you've seen in person, could you narrow it down? I could. Um, I'm going to hate myself for saying this because I hate classic rock. But my first concert B word was the Who. Okay. With Rage Against the Machine. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Like, I don't know why it was. I was in seventh grade. I went to see the Who, and then Rage opened for them for some. I don't know. It was a fucked up show, but. The Who, it was because of the experience. I don't really like the music. Like I said, I mm-hmm. hate classic rock. But the spectacle and the show they put on was amazing. Um, So I guess after that, the other ones would either be, like I said, Newfound Glory. I've always really, really enjoyed. I think they do an amazing show. There's a band called um, Veda, V-E-D-A. And I think they had to change it due to copyright for Vedera. And it's a chick lead singer who plays piano too. And... I fell in love with this band and I would, I'll, I'm going to send you some of their songs beware cause they're hard to find. And I bought their album, but you ever been to one of those shows where just everything about it is like, so you weren't expecting it. Cause she yeah, opened just for, had great production value or something. Yeah. She opened for thrice and oh, okay. I remember I was going, but I always went to the openers to find new music and just watching her perform with the band was amazing. Um, yeah, I, I, every rap show I've been to, I've been disappointed. I'm not really a big yeah. rap show fan. Rap, Waka rap in Flocko person is not that good. Was horrible. Plus, I didn't realize this. Waka Flock Flames and Bloods, and I wore all red that night because you know it's my favorite color. <laughs> I looked like a fucking idiot. I thought I was going to. Luckily, they're all Bloods too, because if they weren't, I would have died that night. What about you? Who you got? So, top two. So, I saw Ozzy Osbourne. I actually saw Ozzy Osbourne twice. Um, and I saw him, uh, I guess it was in 2017. Um, he headlined for a music festival. Um, and okay. I'd seen him, uh, in the early two thousands before that, but, um, I loved Ozzy growing up and d- I was, to be honest with you, this might be just my expectations were so low because of where he's at mentally now. Mm-hmm. He fucking rocked it, dude. He had Zach wild on guitar. And it was such a badass performance, dude. It was so good. There was he was running back and forth across the stage. His voice was perfect. It was just a really, really awesome time. Um, the other one, again, kind of keeping with the whole '80s bands things here. I actually took my dad to a to a Def Leppard concert, and Def Leppard mm-hmm. wasn't really that good. But um, there were two other bands that were with them. It was Foreigner and Styx. And Styx opened up, then Foreigner, and then Def Leppard headlined. Styx was badass, dude. They should have flipped it. Def Leppard should have opened for Styx. Styx was fucking awesome. It was such a good concert. I had the best time at a Styx concert, and it was it was phenomenal. Do you have any weird? Um, I know we're going along, but do you have any any weird concert stories? Uh, I don't know. I mean, you know, there's a lot of weird shit that happens at a concert anyway. I don't think I've done anything that's been too crazy at a concert, so probably not. If we got a minute, I'm going to tell the story where I shit in a Burger King trash can <laughs> with the guitarist of Chimera and the drummer of Atreyu rooting me on. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm at the Huntridge in Vegas. You remember the Huntridge? I do. <laughs> so yeah. the theater the theater that collapsed and then it turned it into a venue and it was like that shithole like, so you couldn't you couldn't go to the bathroom in that place. Well, after the show, uh, Fobs knew Kamira because he did some album artwork for him, and uh, we met him. We were hanging out. We were on their tour bus and everything, and they had a rule we couldn't shit on the tour bus either. So I'm hanging out with the train of that. Well, then we find out Travesty locked our keys in my car, 
So we have photos of that. So I we walk me and the the drummer from Atreyu, my, one of my favorite bands at the time. I have their tattoo lyrics on my back. And Kamira's bassist walk across the street. They go get to get a sandwich, and I go in the bathroom, and they go in too. I, we're all in there, you know, just trying to all go to the bathroom. And there's somebody in the stall, and I'm like, dude, I really have to shit. And the Kamira bassist, he's a small dude, but an angry little fuck. He starts kicking the door, going, "You better get out of here. This guy's gonna shit his pants." <laughs> so <laughs> the guy's like, "I'm gonna be in here a while, dude." And so, no joke, the the drummer for Atreyu is a big dude. He stands by the door and slides the trash can over to me. And goes, just go, bro. We've seen it all on the road. Now, I've just <laughs> met these dudes. I'm a 16-year-old punk. Now, the other problem is, b word. I'm not a smart individual sometimes. I mean, we I'm know. smart, but there are times I'm not. So it was one of those trash cans, you know, that you would you would push the paper in and it would have the swivel, like, triangle yeah. that would go. Yeah. So instead of taking the lid off, I just sort of angle. <laughs> oh, Jesus, Jake. And I just start shitting in this trash can. And the bassist from Kamira is just standing behind me. I'm thinking he's pissing. He's just like, fuck yeah, this is metal. <laughs> For the audience, I really apologize. I did not <laughs> anticipate that it was going to go down there. And I'm holding this trash can. <laughs> and I get out and I have shame and I feel proud and awesome <laughs> all at the same time. And we all get on the tour bus and they're telling the stories. And so then we had the bright idea to drive down the strip and shoot Roman candles out the window and get pulled over by the cops. And all I remember is the Camira's bassist leans over and goes, what's the better story tonight? Almost getting arrested with us or are you shitting in a trash can? <laughs> <laughs> and to this day, it's shitting in a trash can, dude. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny, oh, dude. Oh, sorry. I had so, to say it. Real quick, man. We're both from the Southern Nevada area. Mm-hmm. And this episode is going to come out on the 3rd of October. Uh, on October 1st, 2017, there was the Route 91 Music Festival, the, the Route 91 Harvest Music Festival, where just an atrocity happened. We had we had friends and loved ones that were there. Yeah, my brother and, was there. Uh, yep. And uh, it's it just terrible, man. It's absolutely yep. terrible. So we just want to... Shout out all the survivors and just thank first responders and everything for that because that was pretty impactful. Um, the other thing, uh, our intro and our outro are actually done by Jake the Hater. Uh, you want to you want to talk a little bit about that real quick? Yeah, that was my old uh, band when I was like sixteen. Taxi Cab Fourteen. We were called Taxi Cab Fourteen B word because remember D Twelve? We all had all yep. three egos. They called me Steve Dave as a lead singer before I had my throat surgery. So. We were a ska core band, but did a lot of tour. We toured with Big D and the Kids Table and Real Big Fish that year. <clears throat> there you go. So I yeah. love Real Big Fish. Yeah. So two two different songs we did. Just just little snippets, but j- just for everybody's listening pleasure. Perfect. Uh, last thing, um, we are getting some stickers made, and so we will have those available. Um, keep keep a t- or keep keep looking at our social media for more, um, but they're actually being created by Conway Creations, who is uh, somebody who Jake and I have known forever. Um, and so, give them a look on Facebook. They're at Conway Creations two zero one one, and also follow their hashtag Conway Creations two zero one one, so that way you can see the stickers when they're available, and also take a look at some other works that they do. Uh, Tony has been an awesome person for us to know for many years, and uh, we'd love to support her and her new venture. So again, Conway Creations on Facebook at Conway Creations two zero one one or hashtag Conway. Way Creations two zero one one. Thanks, uh, Tony. Make, thanks, Tony. Make Antoinette, and then make sure that uh, mm-hmm. you follow us on all of our socials. So at Bleach Bros Pod or at Bleach Bros Podcast. Um, go ahead and check us out on Linktree. Uh, Jake's porn site was removed from there uh, for the short term. So uh, Linktree dot com slash Bleach Bros Podcast. Um, we're going to be doing some stuff coming up. Uh, we've got some Jake's takes and some B words of wisdom and some different things like that that are coming out. Um, and with that, Jake, what do you got for me? Thanks for all the dirty talk and come back and get sanitized. Get some girls, beer, and pizza. It's going to be super tight. Oh, yeah, super tight. Oh, yeah, that's right. There's going to be, there's going to be a party in my house tonight.